Creating public folders in Exchange Server 2016 is same as creating public folders in Exchange Server 2013. If you recall in Exchange 2010, uh, the only way to get high availability for public folder is via replication of public folders. And since Exchange 2003, Microsoft was pushing customers to go towards SharePoint as they will, they are saying the exchange will, uh, public folder functionality will be decommissioned. However, they are still alive and well and stronger than ever. I would like to mention one technical article here, which might be important to you. It mentions public folder limits, like what is the maximum size of a public folder you can have? What's the maximum size of a public folder mailbox? How many public folder mailbox you can define inside single database and so on. So I will recommend you go through this article and see the limits because the size of public folder may vary from organization to organization. In this scenario, as you can see, we don't have a public folder. We don't have a public folder mailbox. In order to create public folder, we need a public folder mailbox. And in order to create public folder mailbox, we need a database. And we have currently two mailbox databases, but I, won't, I will not like to use these. I would like to create a third mailbox database. Keep this in mind, it's a mailbox database. There is no nothing called public folder database, okay? So I'm creating one mailbox database called public folder DB. And inside this public folder database, I would like to define, oh sorry, inside this mailbox database, <laughs> I would like to define uh, uh, public folder mailbox. So as my other previous mailbox databases, I'm copying the path, drive E for database files. I will copy it over here, yeah, and paste, right. And drive L for logs. So let me copy path for logs as well. Okay, so let me just highlight the path that I want to remove and say paste. Okay. E for database, L for logs. Our mailbox database called public folder DB is all set to be created. When I click save, mailbox will be created. However, it would like it will remind me that I need to restart Microsoft Exchange Information Store Service, which I will do. I will go to Server Manager and Services. And I will restart Exchange Information Store Service. So we have created a mailbox database called public folder DB. And what we create inside database? We create mailbox, right? And that's what we will do. Inside this public folder DB mailbox database, we will create a public folder mailbox. You, you can create multiple public folder mailboxes. In this example, I will create just one. And I will call it PF mailbox one. And then I can select where I would like to store an active directory as well as the database. So I will choose the mailbox database called public folder DB, which I have created in previous step. Yep. 
So this public folder mailbox called PF mailbox one is defined inside public folder DV mailbox. And now we have public folder mailbox, so we are now good to go in order to create public folders. Whenever we will create public folders, they will be stored inside public folder mailbox. And that public folder mailbox is inside mailbox database. And that is the reason behind uh, that now, since Exchange 2013, we can um, have public folder redundancy as a part of a DAG. Because DAG allows us, us, us to create and uh, to replicate public uh, mailbox databases. And that's what is happening in case of public folders as well. While I'm talking to you, I have created two public folders and it's the third one. One is sales, one is marketing, and one is admin. All these three public folders are created inside mailbox called PF mailbox one. And these are the properties where you can define limits, you can define age limit, retention time. By default, again, it will inherit some limits from the database. However, you can make exceptions. We can mail enable these uh, public folders, and that's what we will do in a while, uh, after a while, however. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I have already some groups with the, uh, with the name sales. So if I mail enable, let's, for example, sales, what it will happen, it will say sales already there, so it will create an email address like sales1 or something like that. I don't want that. So to avoid all this conflict, let me just rename this public folder. Let's say sales department or sales hyphen debt. By default, again, when the public folder will be, uh, when we will mail enable a public folder, it will create email address of a public folder based on public folder name. So to avoid any collision, I will say, I will add department. I will append department with every public folder. Let's say it's the standard in our organization. Another thing, now I will set per the permission of public folder root hierarchy. If you recall, in one of our previous video, I have created a security group called IT. The benefit of creating a security group in exchange that you can use them as a distribution group in addition of assigning permissions to resources. So it has two purposes. It can serve for two purposes. So this is what I'm gonna do. I will select this IT group, and administrator is part of it, and I will assign them all the privileges for the root hierarchy of a public folder so that they can create folders inside, they can change permissions, and I will apply this to all existing subfolders. So this is it. We have three public folders, and we have set the root permission, but who is allowed to create public folders in, the, in public folder hierarchy. Now let's mail enable it. It's very simple, just click Enable under Details, and that's it. Let me do this for our marketing department also. And Sales. So now we have mail enabled these public folders, means now these public folders have email address based on our email address policy. 
uh, if you have two type of email address policies or multiple email address, address policies, those public folders have multiple addresses. And now they can receive emails from inside the organization. In order to receive emails from outside the organization, there are some permissions that we need to set. And for that, we need to go or switch to Outlook. So let me go or switch to Outlook. Here I am. I'm inside administrator's mailbox. And administrator is a part of IT. And IT group is an owner for all public folders. So I should be able to see all public folders that we have created. So let me just click, oh yeah. Here are they, all three of them. So let's select admin department. I will go to the properties and permissions tab. As you can see, IT is owner. Default permission is author. And by default, anonymous has none. If I want this exchange server to receive emails from outside, from the internet, we need to set anonymous as contributor so that this public folder can receive emails from those users which are not authenticated or in short from internet. Okay, and here I would like to assign some other users some different permissions. For example, Mark will be publishing editor. In addition to Mark, I would like to add Johnny and Jennifer and Mark will be, let's say, publishing editor. Johnny and Jennifer will be authors, which is fine uh, for me. So that's it. That's how you assign permissions. I mean, client-level permissions to public folder. Let's send an email to this public folder. Mm -hmm. OK. I, at this moment, I am unable to see this public folder inside the global address list. But if I select public folders, I am able to see it. It means the email address has been generated. It's just a delay either from a global address list population or uh, or an or Outlook cache problem. OK, so let me just add it from here. Let's send a test email to admin dash dapt at it sense.com I'll say test message test and let's see yep it's great mail has been received so we are working fine one more thing I would like to mention that if you want to hide your public folder from mail or from address list. You can do that. All you have to do, just go to the general mail properties and select this checkbox, which is not selected by default. If you select it, the exchange will be hidden, uh, public folders will be hidden from address list. When we talk about address lists, we have several address lists. And if you notice, default global address list, there is no option to update in Exchange Admin Center. For that, you need to use the Exchange Management Shell. Call, and the commandlet is update global address list, then identity as well as the name of the address list. If I preview the glo this global address list, I can see them. Mm -hmm. It means my global address list is absolutely fine. So the only problem I can think of is the Outlook. The Outlook cache is not yet refreshed. So it's just a matter of time until we, be, we will be able to see them inside our Outlook global address list. As I said, global address list, there is no option of updating, but you can update other list by clicking update. So this is it, and thank you for watching, and I would like to see you in another video.